Praise God, I'm glad to be with you tonight. tonight. Um, I'm looking forward to tonight. Been a, uh, just, the Lord's just been talking to me a mile a minute all day long. Just, just speaking to me about uh, where we're going to go tonight. More about where the program's going to go and, and reaching people and souls. Uh, I'm excited. I want to get into, uh, I just, I just want to pray and get into God's word. If, if, if that's all right with you. So, if you want to get your Bibles out, I think we should start at the beginning. Chapter 1. All right, let's pray. Father, I thank you for the word that we're about to receive. And I just ask, Lord, in Jesus' name, this, Lord, this anointed word, this word come forth with power and authority by your Holy Spirit, for it is your Holy Spirit that does the work. Have your way tonight, Lord, and touch these lives and people. But, Lord, this word is not just to touch those who hear it. This word, Lord, is to empower people to go forth. And may it multiply many, many times over to many, many people, Father. May it touch their hearts and lives. In Jesus' name I pray. I trust you had a wonderful Valentine's Day. If you'll just excuse me for a moment, this is important. Becky, I love you, dear. I wish you were here with me tonight. But she, uh, she'll be here tomorrow night. I just love you, babe. My blessing from God. Okay. Um, we got the mushy stuff out of the way. I'm sorry. When God gives you a blessing that great, you, you just got to let her know. All right. So turn in your Bibles. I'm going to uh, get a little more prepared here. Um, just give me a moment. Where, where was it? Lord, help me find it here. All right. We're going to start off in the King James Version. You say, why, Pastor? Because I like it, okay? I would teach more out of the King James Version, but people tend to get a, uh, have a little trouble with it. So, but there's sometimes I just I gotta go there. I have to go there because um, in making the translation e easier in the NIV, you lose a lot of good meat. Okay, and there's just sometimes you get in that King James and it just you just feel the power, the anointing of God in in, in how it's spoken. So look at James, or, or I mean Gen Genesis chapter one and verse. I'm sorry, I set my my. my uh, uh, paper down. Chapter 1, and let's go to verse 27. We'll read two verses. It says, so God created man in his own image. In his image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So this word, I, I, I chose the King James because the NIV does not use the word dominion, okay? And yet, it's, it's the proper word. Or a, another word that would have been good is authority. He says, I give you all authority or dominion over all the things upon the earth. You're in charge, Adam. You have authority. You keep order. Now, I have managed uh, uh, different companies at times or... or, or been ahead of different services or, or whatever, and I had to manage them, and, and I had the authority to manage them. Uh, I was working in, in a, a medical facility at one time, and there were four tiers of management. I was number four, and it simply made sense. You had an administrator, you had your charge nurse, and then you had uh, um, uh, the charge nurse's assistant, and then you had me. If the other three were out of the building, I was the fourth man. I took over. And it was kind of uncomfortable because it's not where my training was. So I was given authority over the building, but I didn't have the ability. I had the ability to, to, to manage. I didn't have ability a lot of times to uh, uh, know what to do for people. So in having that authority, I went to somebody who knew what to do. And when they told me what to do, then I would, I would take that authority and use it and make sure that it was done by somebody that had the ability to do it. Just put that on a shelf because we're going to come back to that later. So God gave us authority over the earth. He told us to rule over it, to take dominion, to subdue it. Now, man had authority over all of creation. Now, I want to say this before we go to Luke chapter 4, verse 6. I want to say this. Man... Has a th was given authority over all the earth, and he had dominion. Satan works in the realm, if I could put it this way, of the earth, in the realm of the physical. 
All right? He, 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 that is his, I, I know he's a spiritual being, but, but that's where he manifests himself. Now, let's go to chapter 4 of Luke, and let's look at verse 6, okay? Jesus is, uh, uh, Satan is tempting Jesus. He's in the uh, uh, wilderness, and uh, he says this to Jesus. Well, well let's look at verse 5 first. It says, The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I give you all authority and splendor, for it has been given to me, and I, re I can give it to anyone I want to. So if you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus said, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. So Jesus answers Satan and says, I'm to worship God and I'm to serve him only. All right, now keep in mind, Jesus was at the right hand of God, but he set that, that, that aside, okay? He set his abilities aside as a God. He came down to earth as a man and he only had the, the, the abilities of a man. But God gave him authority, and I'll show you that he gave him authority. But God gave him authority. So when he spoke to Satan, he didn't say to say, Hey, Satan, you know what? You don't have authority. You don't have no power here. You don't have the right to give it to me. No, on the contrary, Satan did have authority and he did have the right to give it to whom he wanted to. Authority can be transferred. And he had the choice to transfer that authority. G Jesus never argued with Satan about his authority on earth. Now, where did he get that authority? He got it from man. Man gave it up when he sinned in the garden. He handed man his authority. Okay? He gave, uh, uh, or I mean man, handed his authority to Satan. He gave it to Satan. Satan now is offering it to Jesus if he will just bow down and worship him. And Jesus says, no, I, I can't worship you. Matter of fact, I can't even serve you. I have to serve the Lord God Almighty. So, Satan has authority, people. A lot of people don't understand. I, 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 don't, I get so frustrated listening to people say, well, why in the world does God allow there to be famines and children die and all this stuff? Uh, God gave it to us, and we gave it to Satan. It is Satan's realm and his authority, and, and we did it. But Jesus come to take that authority back. So Satan does pretty much as he pleases because he's been given authority over this earth. It isn't God that does these things. God comes that there may be life and more abundantly, but Satan came to what? To kill, steal, and destroy. And he's the father of lies. And he loves to do these things and then blame it on the other party. Simple, clear. He's always blaming the church. He blames God. He blames everybody else for his doing. Okay? But man is supposed to be keeping things in order, but he gave away that authority. Okay? If, if you have a... a uh, how, how can I put this? If you have a, a, a business, and there's a vacuum there, and somebody don't take authority, it'll what? Run into the ground. Somebody's got to take authority and manage it. And a lot of times, there'll be people who come along, and they'll take that authority, even though it wasn't conveyed on them, because it's been given them by the very fact that nobody else took it. Sounds a little strange, but I'll tell you, I've seen it happen way too many times. I have seen people who were supposedly in authority, but because they never used that authority, other people of, of, of a lesser position suddenly take over and run the place. And they take the authority upon themselves. So here we have Satan, and he's telling Jesus, I have this authority, I'll give it to you. And Jesus doesn't argue with him, he just simply says, I can only serve God, I cannot serve you. And I'm not going to bow. Now put that on a shelf and let's jump over, if you would, to chapter 4 and verse 31. Same chapter. Just a short time later and look what it says. Then he went, Jesus, then he went down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and on the Sabbath began to teach the people. They were amazed at his teaching because he had, his message had authority. So he's preaching with authority. He's preaching with authority. Let's read on. In the synagogue, there was a man possessed by a demon with evil spirits. 
He cried out at the top of his voice, Ha! What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down before them all and came out with an, uh, without injuring him. All the people were amazed and said to each other, What is this teaching? With authority and power he gives orders to evil spirits and they come out. And the news about him spread throughout the surrounding area. Now the reason he taught with authority, the difference in teaching with authority and not teaching with authority, I see a lot of people, they have the ability to teach. They went and they learned how to teach, okay? They were taught how to preach. They were given that ability to teach and preach. But the problem is when they taught and they preached, and back in this time, it was no definite in their preaching. There was, and in today, there's a lot of pastors, well, there's things we just don't know. If it's God's will, okay, sarah, sarah, whatever will be, will be. If he wants to heal you, he will. And if he don't, he won't. And there's no definites. There's no authority. There's just, there, there's no absolutes. But with God, there's absolutes. There's absolutes with God. But if you don't know the absolutes, you have no what? You have no authority. You don't know what you're doing. If you don't know God's will, then your authority and faith is without value. It's of no value. And I'll show you why in a moment it's of no value. But let's move on. I want you to look at Matthew chapter 8 and verse 1. We'll start with verse 1. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 1. Now when he came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him, and a man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was cured of his leprosy. Then Jesus said to him, See that that you don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gifts Moses uh, commanded as I a testimony to them. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed and is terribly uh, suff in terrible suffering. Jesus said to him, I will go heal him. The centurion replied, Lord, I don't even deserve to have you come under my roof. But you say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell you this one go and he goes and that one come and he comes. And I say to my servants do this and he does it. When Jesus heard this he was astonished and said to those following him. Listen, listen. I tell you the truth I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to many... I say, many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast on Abraham, uh, with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of this kingdom will be thrown outside into darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus said to the centurion, Go, it will be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that very moment. So the centurion watches Jesus. He sees him taking authority over these spirits and everything. And he realizes, wait a minute, this man has authority. I'm going to say this, and I hope, you, I hope you're picking up on a theme tonight. But as we go through the night, you're going to uh, uh, grab it more and more. He looks down and he realizes he has authority. He don't have the ability to cast out demons. He's human. But he does have the authority to cast out demons. The centurion sees that he has authority. The centurion understands that he has authority. If his government, if the Roman uh, uh, Caesar tells that centurion to go conquer a nation... He knows good and well he cannot conquer that a nation. He does not have the ability. But he does have the authority to leave a hundred men. And those hundred men might go and they might even conquer a nation. You'd be amazed at what they did back then. But they were in, in groups of hundred. So he knew as a hundred men they had the ability to do something. But they had to do what he told them to do because he had authority from Caesar himself. He understands this. He understands that God in heaven had, has the ability to do the work, but Jesus had the authority on earth. God had given the, him this authority, and when he spoke, listen, when he spoke, that demon had to go because that demon knew what? That God was going to throw him out, that the Holy Spirit would throw him out. Stick with me. Just, just don't, don't run off. 
Look at Luke chapter 9 and verse 1. 9 1. Jesus stepped into the boat, crossed over, and came to his own town. Some men brought to him a paralytic lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. At this, some of the teachers of the law said to them, This fellow was blaspheming. Thro thro knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, Why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, get up and walk. But so that they may know that the Son of Man had authority on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, get up, take your mat, and go home. The man got up and went home, and when the crowd saw this, they were filled with awe. And they praised God who had given such authority to men. So here, Jesus is using his authority, but the same faith, listen, the same faith, God help me with this. The same faith, the same authority that forgives you of your sins is the same authority that heals your body. It heals you. He said, your sins are forgiven. He's seen the man's faith. Then he turns around and says, just get up move your mat. Get up, pick up your mat and go home. He says, so that you may know I have authority. So that you know my words have authority. Open your eyes and watch. Now, just stay with me. Go over to 10 now. Luke 10. I just, I, I just, no, no, let's go to Luke 9. <laughs> That's okay. Luke 9, 1. We're going to go to Luke now. When Jesus had called the, the 12 together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. He went, he sent some out to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He told them, take nothing for your journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave the town. If people do not welcome you, shake the dust off your feet when you leave their town as a testimony against them. So they set out and they went from village to village preaching the gospel and healing people everywhere. So Jesus calls, the authority can be transferred. So Jesus takes his authority to cast out demons. He takes his authority to heal the sick. And he, he, he spreads it out over his disciples. Okay, At one point it was 72 disciples. At one point it was the 12 apostles. But he, he gives it to them and, and he sends them out. And they have authority to do these things. They did not have the ability to do it. They had the authority to do it. That is so very important. Don't forget that. They did not have the ability. They had the authority. Put that on a shelf. And let's go to chapter 10 and verse 16 now. It said, He who listens to you listens to me. And he who rejects you rejects me. But he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. Seventy-two returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submitted to us in your name. And he replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and come, uh, overcome all power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your name is written. Listen, your names are written down in heaven. So he says, don't rejoice over the fact that you have authority, but I want you to reject over the fact that, or, or rejoice over the fact that, that your names are written down in heaven. But you have this authority because I give it to you. Did they have that authority before this day? No. He gave them that authority. He gave them that authority. But how did he get the authority? Because Jesus did exactly what Adam should have done. When he was in the garden with, with uh, uh, Satan, I mean in the wilderness with Satan, he told Satan, hey, it is written, I only serve the Lord God. I don't serve myself. I'm not self-serving. I'm not self-seeking. I don't care to, to, to steal something in a way that is mine because if I take the authority that you give me, I have to serve you. But I only serve God the Father. So he, instead of being self-centered like Adam was, trying to be like God, he served God, and in serving God, he became like God. The amazing thing, that when you go back to the Garden of Eden, this, this, this astounds me. Satan says, you'll be like God. God's not giving you a fair shake. You're going to be like God if you do that. He's holding back. But in, listen, but through Christ, he makes us like himself. He, he puts us back in his image again. 
Look, look at Noah when he got the sons of God and the daughters of men. Okay? The sons of God were ones who were in the image of God. They were in the image of uh, uh, Seth, who was in the image of Adam, who was in the image of God. Those were the sons of God. They were in the image of God. God is in the image of having authority. But when God uses, when you have authority and when you use God's authority, when he's given it to use, it is for somebody else, my friend. It is for the betterment of others. It's not to bestow a bunch of junk on yourself that will rot and fade and, and, and rust and go away. Stay with me. Now, Matthew 28, 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Now, I could read the rest, but I want you to see something. He, get, he says, Now, I have all authority in heaven and earth. I have authority in heaven on high, and I have authority on earth. I have all authority that's been given to me. Now, I'm sending you out. When he, when he sends somebody, he, the, he gives them the authority. He says, Now, go. And this is what you're to do. Go. I am giving you authority. Go. And do what? Make disciples. When you make a disciple, what do you do? You are transferring the authority that's been given to you like Moses did to the, the 70 elders. You take that authority and you share it with others and you multiply. You multiply the work that you're doing. Now, stay with me because we're about to hit something that, that, that I hope is going to hit you hard in between the eyes. Go to John. John, if you would. Chapter 14. I think I even marked it. Chapter, I did. John chapter 14 and look at verse 10. Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. You see, it was the Father that did his work through Jesus. A lot of people, well, Jesus was God. No, Jesus was fully man. He set that, his powers aside and came down, submitted to the Father as a man, and he was given authority as a man so that we might have authority. The firstborn among many brothers so that he could transfer the authority from us to his, uh, his apostles, to his disciples, and to his offspring. Because Jesus was at the right hand of God before he came down. He had authority being at the right hand of God, but we did not. So he became fully flesh. And if anybody tells you that, that, that he did not become fully flesh, he's not a man of God. He's of the devil. Go over to John. First, it's either first, second, or third John. I think it's first John. Read it for yourself. He became fully flesh. And he took that authority back so he could transfer it back and give it back to us like we had back in the garden. But it is not us who does, you and I, who, who does the work. It's the Father who does the work. Let me put it this way, or a better way of putting it is, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Holy Spirit. You see, Jesus is the Word. The Word was spoken. But the Holy Spirit does the work. Hold your place in John. Let, let me prove that. Oh, I'm going to go over to King James. Again, okay, I, I don't even remember what verse. I did. I, please, Lord, did I write it down? King James, chapter 1, uh, blah, 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 verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved over the face of the waters, okay? You get in the NIV. It says basically the same thing. We're not, we don't need to read it. The Holy Spirit is the one that always does the work. Jesus is the spoken word. Many people know how to speak the word. Many people know the word, but they have no authority. Or they don't know they have authority. So the word is without effect. Because without the Holy Spirit who does the work, well, the seven sons of Sceva went in and, and they were uh, of trying to invoke invoke the name of Jesus like it was some sort of magical incantation or some, ooh, abracadabra, you little devils, get out of here. And those little devils happened to jump on top of them, stripped them naked, and left. they left there beaten, <coughs> naked, bleeding, because they didn't have any authority. 
It's the Father in you. When He makes His home in you, it is the Father that does the work in you, but He gives you authority to speak. Now, so, let me, let me put it like this. God gave Samson ability. In the Old Testament, God often gave men ability. Okay? There's some people in the New Testament, He gives us ability sometimes. But Samson trusted in the ability that God gave him, didn't even know when God had departed from him, and he fell. And until he got the Spirit of God back into him, until he invited him back in and his hair began to grow and his relationship was restored, then his ability come back. If, the problem today I see with so many in the church, they're always praying for God to give them ability, but God is not going to give them ability because if God gave you ability, you would trust in your ability instead of trusting in the authority and His Holy Spirit. You would fail and you would fall, even more so today than in the days of Samson. If Samson fell at that time, and yet today sin has been multiplied many times over, how much faster do you think you would fall today? People try to mimic God's authority by going and learning how to preach or how to get ability. Preaching isn't your ability. Preaching is by the Holy Spirit because He gives you authority and He speaks through your word. Or speaks His word through you. Let me put it that way. Okay? So Samson failed because he trusted in the ability that God gave him. But God gives you authority and as Paul says, I am made perfect in weakness. For it is in weakness that I have to turn to God and trust and speak my authority because my ability is too weak to do the job. But if I speak by the authority God given me, God Christ or Christ does the work. Now it's Christ that does the work and I'll show you. All right, let's go to John. And I've heard so many people interpret this scripture and I get a kick out of it sometimes. I just like, wow, it says what it says. All right, let's read on. Let's go to verse 11, chapter 14, John, verse 11. It says, Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and that the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. So it's the Father that does the work. Hang on. Somebody's trying to get a hold of me. Lord, help me. Oh. Okay, whatever. I'll get to that. Okay. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me, will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. So Jesus says he's going to do even greater things. Now, before I read the rest of this, I want to expound on that because I want you to see something at the end of this. He says he's going to do even greater things. The reason that people try to qualify this statement and try to, to, to uh, um, say that we're not actually going to do greater things, we're going to do more things because there's more of us. No, it says you're going to do greater things. Because when they say that they're, they have a problem with the scripture saying we're going to do greater things, is they're looking at ability. Well, man does not have the ability to do greater things than the Father or the Son. And that's not what it's saying. It's saying because I'm going to the Father, you'll be given greater authority. Because when he went to the Father, he died on the cross and he rose from the dead, all authority had been given to him. Not just a portion of authority, but all authority. And that authority will rest upon you. But it, listen my friends, I'll read the rest in a moment. But, but it isn't that you're, they, they are looking at ability. Too many people are looking at ability. The more I trust in God, and I realize my own personal weakness, I realize I don't have the ability, but I do have the authority. They are looking at ability. Well, they can't outdo Jesus. You're not going to because it's not them that does the work. Jesus is doing it through them. Let me prove it to you. Because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may give, listen, bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Now the difference is, is when Jesus was on earth, Hello, world. When Jesus was on earth, the Father was doing the work. But when he went to the Father, he comes back and he says, I'll be doing the work through you. I and the Father and the Holy Ghost will be doing the work through you. All the fullness of the Godhead, listen, all the fullness of the Godhead will be doing the work through you. You will speak my words with authority, but I will do it. 
Not us. So when God, God uses somebody, and let's say they do something even greater than Jesus did while he was on the earth, it isn't because they're a greater person because they got greater ability. It's because Christ is doing it through them and they are still just a piece of clay, a bunch of ashes. They, they, they're no more. They're just good old worm food. They're still flesh and blood. They don't have the ability to do greater things. They've been given the authority because it's Christ who does it through you. People get caught up on ability. A lot of times I have people, I, I'm telling you, I, I know pastors look at me like, I can't believe you're doing what you're doing and you're on TV when I was on TV and doing all this. I just can't, because they look at me and they look at my ability, they don't look at the authority. I know my ability, and honey, my ability is not to heal anybody. I'm not a doctor, and even they only, how can I put it, they help healing along. They don't do the healing, they just help it come along. I don't have that ability. But I do have the authority through faith to pray for others and expect them to get healed because Christ dwells in me and is Christ and the Father who does the work. For my friends, it's not by might nor by power, but it is simply by the Spirit of God. It's always been the Holy Spirit that has done the work through us. Case in point, it says the word of the Lord came to them. When the word of the Lord comes to you, the word being Christ, comes the inspiration of the Holy Spirit because God sent him to us. Now Christ is doing the work in you because all authority has been given to him in heaven and earth and he bestows it upon you to go and do. So quit praying for God to give you the ability to do something but ask God to bestow his authority upon you and then begin to walk in the authority because when you receive Christ he tells us to what? Go! He sends us. He sends us to be sent of God is to be commissioned by God to go in his authority. He never said you'll have the ability. That's God's job. That's God's job. If God gave you the ability you'd fall on your face. Because you would rely on that gift that God has given you. Instead of on the Holy Spirit that does the work through you. Huge difference, my friends. That's why when God speaks, he speaks in the past tense. Let me, let me show you. Jesus said, it says in God's word, Old Testament says, by his stripes you are healed. But in the New Testament it says, brought by his stripes you were healed. So it is finished. It's done. He said, but, but, but wait a minute, Pastor. I, I'm still having these problems. The problem isn't with whether it's done. The price has been paid. The problem is, is you're not taking authority over it. You don't know who you are in Christ Jesus, your Lord. When you know who you are in Christ Jesus, your Lord, and who you are is his child, his servant, and you've been given authority to take authority over those things of this life. So when you pray, there are times, that, honey, quit asking and start demanding it to go because why are you asking God to heal somebody when God said he healed them? No, God says, I've healed them. You tell that mountain to get out of the way. Big difference, isn't it? Christ is not going to come down and bear more stripes so that somebody's going to be healed. He did that. It is finished. It is done. I got a caller. I'm going to grab that caller and then we'll pray, okay? Who do I have on the line? Well, I lost them. They hung up before I got a chance. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the authority that you've given us, Lord. And Lord, help us to take authority over these things that trouble us, Lord. To tell the mountain to get out of the way. Father, in Jesus' name, wake up the church. Quit having it, Lord. They trust in their own abilities. Help them to trust in the authority that you bestowed upon us and to know it. In Jesus' name, amen. Who do I have on the line? Hey, sir, this is a young man from the Midwest. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm, I'm just calling because I, I've, I've, uh, I've been sort of uh, discouraged from going out and finding a wife. I've, I'm... Uh, 
I've uh, I've realized that that women in the modern age have not been uh, amenable to raising a modern family. It's uh, tough if you want to raise a good Christian family in this age to find a woman that's amenable to that sort of thing. Yeah. I, I and I'm just wondering if you had any advice in sort of finding a good Christian wife. No, sir, I, I do have a, some advice on that. We, we first have to be good Christian men and we have to, to walk in God's ways and then God will bring that woman to you. Uh, I, and and to, to generalize and say there are no women that are capable of that is, is not true. Okay? I, I've raised my own daughters and they're very capable. I have daughter-in-laws who are very capable. Of, of raising their children, making sure they're in the church and doing what God has called them to do. And uh, uh, I know many, many women that are, are, are Proverbs 31 women. Uh, but on the other hand, when we walk as Christ walked, then God will bring that woman to us. So um, my uh, uh, suggestion is um, seek the Lord. When we get our own house in order, God will take care of us. God bless you, sir. Okay. I got to, uh, hold on. I think I got a prayer request here. If you want to call in, you can call in. It, it um, Well, I guess I should put it on there. Then you can see, couldn't you? There you go. 727-250-2217. Okay. Uh, we're going to pray for... Uh, um, I think it's Chanel. Uh, it says her mother needs prayer, so let's lift her up in prayer. If you would, lift her up in prayer with me. Father, I don't know what's going on with her mother offhand, Lord. I know I've prayed before, but Father, I pray, Lord. I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, you would just comfort this family, that you would stir up the faith that is in them. And in the name of Jesus, we speak to that woman, and we tell her to rise up and be healed. Just as you spoke to Peter's mother, we speak to her and we say, Be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, got a couple more calls coming in. God bless you. How can I pray with you? Hey, Brother Jeff. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord, man. It's uh, good to actually talk to you, I guess, on the phone now. When uh -huh. I had a uh, message you in uh, Sarasota, Florida when I was home. Yeah. And I just want to give a praise report, man. Uh, the Lord is so good. Amen. He's more precious than apples of gold and platters of silver. Mm -hmm. And if people will get their focus on Jesus and not on a woman and not on money and all this stuff in the world, it would be a plan. God would put the plan in motion, but we have to focus on Him fully and Amen. get everything else out of the way. Amen. And he's just, he, you know, I want to tell everybody that's listening, if they will just trust in him with all their hearts mm -hmm. and lean not to their own understanding and in all their ways acknowledge him, he will direct their path because he has done this clearly in my life. That is exactly I used to be on drugs, mm -hmm. alcohol, pornography, and all these things that the flesh seeks after. But today I've been delivered. I've been set free by the King of Glory. And, and, and he's got a plan for each and every one of us. Mm -hmm. And I just give him glory for what he's done today. Mm -hmm. You know, David, it's so easy to blame everybody else for, for what we're going through in our troubles. But when we go to God and we go humbly and we just say, Lord, I'm the mess here. I messed up. Makes all the difference right. in the world, doesn't it? Amen, yes. I mean, listen, he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. If these people that, see, I think what it is, many have got their focus on this worldly system more than Jesus. Yep, I agree. And when, when the Spirit of God, it will come in if we will just say, okay, God, really, into my life. Mm -hmm. And be, it be mean business with God. He will show up and show out. That's right. That's right. And he he pulled me out of the miry clay with his sin, mm -hmm. and he set my feet upon a rock. He has established my going. 
And it's he that does this, not what I've done. Right. Now, now and, am I correct in saying there was a time when you had a lot more worldly wealth to your name? But today, there was a time in your life you had a lot more worldly wealth than you have today, correct? And Well, yeah, when I was, I was on uh, drugs and... Mm -hmm. but, today, making, you know, but today, David, you've been set free. You're not in bondage to anything. You just serve no. the Lord, but you're happy. you got joy in your he, life, don't you? He, he's on my mind when I wake up. Mm -hmm. He's on my mind when I go to bed. Mm -hmm. He's on my mind throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And even though the enemy will try to throw the spirit of fear, I just trust in the Lord. Yeah. Now, David, is there something I'm praying with you about? Because my phone is just going crazy here. What can I pray for? Yeah, you? I want to pray for the lost that's in America today. Okay. And I, I, I really, as a heart, cry the people that, that they would just come to the foot of the cross. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't have the answers other than Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And and that that God, He's with me and, and He said He will never leave me nor forsake me and maybe in a time in the mm -hmm. future we will meet face to face. I believe we will, David. I hope we All do. Right. I pray to God that we do in the name of yeah. Jesus that we will have this divine appointment set by the Lord. Let, let's pray, David. I, 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 Amen. I got, Go ahead. Let's pray, brother. Father, I have the same heart throb as my brother, Lord. Mm. But Lord, unless people go, unless they're sent, unless they preach, unless there's workers in the field, because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word, but it comes by those who are sent, commissioned, who have been given authority to preach the gospel. I ask, Father, you would send Holy yeah. Ghost filled preachers, evangelists, teachers, mm -hmm. Lord, individuals to go forth, Lord, and preach the gospel to the lost so that they may yeah. find their way, they may come home and be set free from all of these things, Lord. We pray in mm -hmm. Jesus' name that you yeah, would start yeah. a revival confirming your word with signs mm -hmm. and wonders yeah, following, yeah. Lord, with people who walk out, Lord, with authority, mm -hmm. preaching your word because it is the Holy Spirit that does the work it is the Holy Spirit that convicts the soul. It is the Holy Spirit that changes our hearts. Yes, in Lord. Jesus' name, we pray these things and we thank you for it, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, David. I got so many people calling. I'm going to have to grab this other line, okay? Can I say one thing before you go? If you'll make it quick. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would bless this man you, and flourish whatever he is in need of, God, and that you would put a hedge of protection around this ministry that the enemy can't even get in no way, shape, or form. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. God bless you, sir. Be blessed. Thank you. God bless you. Who do I have on the line? Hi, this is me. Hi, Denise. How can I pray for Hi. you? Hi. I read my prayer. Um, my landlord's wanting to sell the house for thirty five thousand as is, and we're trying to get a loan to get it, but nobody wants to give us to to us. And I wrote a letter to the landlord, and um, the Lord directed how I was supposed to write it and all. And I'm going to call her tomorrow and see if she won't sell the house for 55000 and fix it up mm -hmm. because it, it's got roofing and stuff mm -hmm. that needs things. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's pray over it, Denise. Let's give it to the Lord. I've done things like that, and I've had God move mountains for me. So let's, let's just take it to the Lord and trust Him with it, okay? Father, okay. I pray for Denise's favor tonight, Lord. And Father, I pray that you make a way so that they can have, Lord, they can own a home. But Lord, a home that isn't falling apart. A home that would stand, protect them, Lord, and have the things that a home needs, Lord. And I ask that you make a way where there seems to be no way, Father. You move upon this individual, Father. And Lord, you do something that is great and good for both of them. That they both would prosper through this situation. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray. In Jesus' name, and I ask, Father, that you give her the ability to be faithful in making the payments and that she would be careful to make the payments and be a blessing to this landlord. 
In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, sister. Don't listen. Don't give up. God bless you. Okay. Another call. Boy, they're coming in fast. God bless you. How can I pray for you tonight? Um, hi, Pastor Jeff. This is Chanel Lockett again calling about my mother, Daisy. Yeah, I was just praying for her. I seen you you, you wrote on uh, 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 the YouTube page. Yes, sir. How's Daisy doing? She's coming along pretty good. But she has a strong mind. She has a what? She's a very strong person. Mm -hmm. She has a strong mind. Mm hmm yeah, very strong mind. She's been with God ever since, what, 1979, my whole life. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I have a little, I'm trying to catch a cold, which I can't catch, but I have to take care of my mother. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, okay. Well, don't excuse try, my voice. <laughs> don't, don't try to catch a cold, tell it to go. Exactly. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> Daisy? Um, Daisy? Well, I, this circle cell is... Mm-hmm. We we just have we need a miracle. Amen. We need a miracle, Pastor. Well, God's we giving you, listen, Daisy. God's given you a miracle. He's already healed it. We got to take authority over it and tell it to go. Now, Daisy, there's been a few times I've uh, 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 prayed over people that had demons. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I prayed and, and, and they did not they didn't want to go. They fought mm -hmm. me for a little bit. Even Jesus had moments where where there was a hesitation. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I just kept praying and telling them to go. And I wouldn't, I would just stand my ground. Mm -hmm. and, and they would try to put up like they didn't have to go. They would try to fool me mm -hmm. or fool me as though they were gone. But the Lord said, no, they're still there. And when they came out, there was no question they came out. But what I'm trying to tell you, sister, is the same thing with the spirit of cancer. When you're talking to cancer, you keep telling it to go because, Daisy, cancer has no right in the body of Christ, does it? And your mother is know. part of the body of Christ, is she not? Yes, she is. Then it has no right to be there. It is God's will that the body of Christ is healed. Amen? Amen. And it is his ultimate will. And the last thing that will be put under his feet is death in the grave and will live forever, correct? Correct. So sickness, correct. sickness has already been paid for. And he gave you the deposit of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's the one that does the work. So let's take authority over it. And let's not waver. Let's not doubt. Let's not give th that Merkel cell cancer mm -hmm. more power and, and more prestige and more honor than we give God himself because Jesus is already taking care of it. Already. Okay. <laughs> let's do it. Father, I speak to that Merkel cell cancer that is in Daisy. And I command you to get out in the name of Jesus. You mountain, you pick yourself up and throw yourself in the sea. But I command you to leave this body. In the name of Jesus Christ, you stubborn demon, get out in Jesus' name. You are never to return to this flesh again. For her flesh was cleansed and washed by the blood of the Lamb. Made new again, healed, and set free. And we know what God's Word says. It didn't say that she, ought, she will be healed. It says she is, it's finished. She was healed in Jesus name in Jesus name go and Father I pray over my sister I pray that you touch her lips right now with a coal of fire from the altar Lord they would not be stammering and they would not be Lord moved back and forth by every wind that would come along every report that would come along no matter what the report may her lips stand firm and unwavering and trusting you. In yes. Jesus' name I pray. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you, sister. Thank you for bless calling. Bless you too. All right. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Listen, you can call me at 250, I'm sorry, 727, 250-2217. Okay, um, I do want to give you a little information here. If you live... Um, if you live in the, the parish area, parish, south of us, okay, I have a church that I would highly recommend to you. It is at the YMCA. It is 12214 U.S. Highway 301 North. 
Parish, Florida, and it's called Passion Church. Now, now my friend Brian, Pastor Brian Royer, uh, uh, pastors that church. And I'm telling you, you want to hear a fireball sermon? You go down there and hear him. You hear what, what God speaks through him. I've sat through many of his sermons. I'm telling you, man can preach. The Spirit of God is upon him. So if you're in the parish area, don't just go to church. He don't need you just to fill a chair. He needs help. Okay? Go down there and, and help him out. But I just, I feel led. There's a couple of churches God spoke to my heart. And he says, you, you start telling people, as, as, as you find out about these places, you tell them to go. So I recommend Pastor Royer, okay? I want you to know you can go there. Now, I had, and you can call me, 727-250-2217. Um, all right, I got to move these screens around. You know, this is not easy. All right, what does it say? Um, Jesus, help us. There was another prayer request on here, and now I can't find it. Okay, we have a, a, a person here, and uh, I'm just going to call him young. They said that they were just told they have stage 2 cancer. Listen, I've had doctors tell me I had a lot of things, okay? I had them tell me I wasn't going to see. I don't care what they have to say. The only thing I care about is what Jesus had to say, okay? The Word always trumps. The Word of God always trumps the Word of man, always. Now... The Lord told me that I'd have my sight when I was a young man. I'd always have my sight, and I would lose part of my sight. Kept praying, and I got my sight back. Okay, I'm going to come back to you, Mr. Young, or Mrs. Young. I don't know it. I don't know the first name, but I'll come back to you. Let me grab this call. God bless you. Who do I have on the line? Hello? Are you there? Yes. Okay. Who who do I have on the line? Ramona Martinez from California, Pastor Jeff. Ramona, how are you doing, sister? <laughs> Trying to reach you, <laughs> but the time is so different. I feel like I, I you know, every night somebody will call and I feel like I'm, I'm having a reunion all over again. It's well, so good to hear from I miss you. you. Well, I, well, I need all prayer. You guys. I need prayer, Pastor Jeff, for my finances. Okay. And for... um. I don't want to have diabetes. I don't care what they say. I, I believe that God will heal me. Mm -hmm. And I need my, um, to find my um, birth certificate so I can get my license and I can't find it. Where were you born? Where was I born? Yeah. Uh, in Paducah, Texas. Okay. Don't they have a courthouse there? No, I have my papers somewhere in the house, but I can't find them. Well, all I'm saying is you can write them and get a cert new certified copy. I've had to do that myself a time or two. Moved so many times, that, and uh, uh, we had to get one for my wife once. In, in, uh, but, you know, if you can't find it, just call them. That you can get a, a certified copy. Usually it has a raised seal on it, and it's very cheap normally. It's just a few dollars and save you a okay, lot Okay, but just pray. I got them in the house. Okay, I'll pray you find it. All right, I'm just trying to help you, but I will pray you find it. Ramona, okay. it's good to hear your voice. Oh, it's so I'm so glad to hear your voice. I've missed you. Oh, thank you, sister. I missed everybody when I when I. Oh, I'm telling you, it was rough. It was it was hard. Let's pray. Sister. Are you ever going to have a program? This is a program. No, but uh, later on TV. I, we, we are working on going on TV, but I do not plan on having a prayer program on TV, a preaching program. I've, I've been in negotiation. We're waiting for some more money to come in. It's, we've, we've raised some, and when it comes in, we're going to go on television. But the Lord told me to do this on the Internet and preach mm -hmm. on the air and direct people to this. Because Okay, so the other one's going to be plain preaching. It's going to be just preaching is the plan. Okay. Preaching. So I can call you here. You can always call me here. I'll be here every night, Monday through Friday, from 10 to, to 12. That is going to be Eastern time. And, and later on, we're going to add an hour. When, when I 
get to the point that I consistently fill these two hours with calls, then I'll go to the third hour, okay? Okay, all right. And tell your friends, tell your brothers, your sisters, your dog, your cat, tell everybody, okay? I, <laughs> now, I, don't, I, I will. I, I'm going to be honest, Ramona, I don't speak meow very well, but I'll do the best I can, okay? I know God's going to make a way for you. I know he is. He will. He already is. I can't even believe I it. have never met a, a, a preacher that's so anointed, anointed like you. Well, thank you, sister. But you know what? There's a lot of them out there. I'm telling you, I know a lot of very anointed men of God. Yeah, but there's very few that God will direct you to. No, well, they're there. That God's, God's going to show them. He's going to bring them forth. And God told me to help them find. Look at Chip Miller. You remember Chip Miller that was on the air? Nah. Uh, Chip's a very anointed man of God. And he was on the air. I'm telling you, that man can pray and he can preach. And uh, I'm almost jealous. But, no, you're very good. Well, he, he's good. Let's pray, sister. Let's, let, let's pray. Father, I thank you for bringing Ramona back into our lives. And Lord, I yeah. thank you because you are always praying over her. You're always with her. And Lord, I ask in Jesus' name, you touch her finances. You increase her finances. That you give her wisdom in this area. Great wisdom, Father. And Lord, so that her finances would multiply. Show her, Lord. Show her how, Father. In Jesus' name. And Father, I pray over that body and I command that body to be healed and whole and healthy in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you, body, to control that sugar, for that diabetes to be gone, that, that spirit of infirmity to leave this body in Jesus' name. And Lord, I call forth that birth certificate. I know how many times I have lost things and I've asked you, you gave me a vision and you showed me where it was at and there it would be. I ask, Father, you would show her now in Jesus' name where that birth certificate is. And she go right to it and get it, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. And Lord, may you continue to bless her. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And I'm going to send donations, uh, whatever I can, Pastor, to you. I appreciate it. Ramona, you can either go online and do it at PastorJeffLane.com. You can call the number on the screen. It's 727-509-3865. Or you can mail it in and ask for a prayer cloth. And, and send me a letter and, and so that I continue to put you in prayer, okay? And do you still have prayer cloth? Yes. I'm going to put the address on the screen. And a matter of fact, I'll try to do it right now. All right? Let's see if I can get that address to come up. Hold on. There it is. It's P.O. Box 23. Palm Harbor, Florida, 34682. Okay? Well, it's showing the screen because I'm on the phone right now. Okay. Well, do you have something to write with? Uh, let me get a pen right now. All right. I've been struggling to get through. I keep missing the time because it's a different time in California. Yeah, I know. And I, I, I've thought about that several times. I thought, boy, I'm going to be on so early in California, they're, they're going to wonder... It, it, it's been confusing for some people because of our Eastern time. Yeah, for real. I always okay, let me see. Okay, you ready? I've got, uh, yes. P.O. Box 23. Okay, P.O. Box 23. 23, okay. Palm Harbor, Florida. P-A-L-M? Pardon? Is it P-A-L-M? Yes, like a palm tree. Harbor? Yes, Palm Harbor, Florida. Three four six eight two. Three four? Three four six eight two. Six eight. Three seven six eight two. No, three four. Okay. Six oh, eight three, two. Four? Yeah, three four six eight two. Okay. And, okay. And you Put Carpenter's Way Ministries, or you can put Call to Pray, but I prefer you to put Carpenter's I, Way I have Ministries. Carpenter Way Ministry on my Facebook. Perfect. Just send it to that, because that's what, what the P.O. box is. As a matter of fact, I need to go in there and let them know that we're now taking mail from Call to Pray, but it's not an issue. I'll let them know. Okay, I will write to you and ask you for a prayer cross. God bless you, sister. Good to hear your voice. Oh, uh, thank you. I'm going to I'm gonna send a $5 uh, donation. Whatever, whatever God leads, sister. I, it's just whatever God tells you. It's, it's much appreciated, and it's, it's all going to go to the ministry. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. I'm, uh, I'm going to help you as much as I can. Thank you, sister. God bless. Bye-bye. Okay, love you, pastor. Love you, sister. Yep. Okay, if you need to call in, you can call us at 727-250-2217. Uh, if you're new to us, these are people that, that used to follow me on TV. Um, but anyway, uh, um, now they're, 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 they're slowly finding me. We're going to put out more advertisements so it'll be easier for them to find us, but not right now. Listen, I've got to pray for, for um, Young right now, so would you pray with me? Because if you were told you had stage 2 cancer... Listen, we all get a little nervous sometimes, don't we? Now let's come against the spirit of fear and let's rebuke this. Father, I come against this stage 2 cancer by the stripes and by the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we command that cancer to leave this body and to never return. In Jesus' name, be gone. For every cell in this body to be healthy and strong and Lord... I come against any spirit of fear, any spirit of doubt that would try, any fiery darts of the devil that would try to put doubt in their mind of what Christ has already done. It's finished, it's done, and we command this cancer to go in Jesus' name. Amen. I, uh, um, I started telling you about my eyes, and I've talked about it so much, but I'm going to tell you something. Somebody told me, he said, why are you always talking about your eyes? I says, if you lost your eyesight... If you lost part of your eyesight and God gave it back to you, you go, you're going to talk about it for the rest of your life. Because I'll tell you, when you can't see, it's no fun. When you have cancer and it's gone, you want to scream hallelujah. i got more years to live. When you, God heals you of, of whatever it is, takes chronic pain away, I, 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 I'm not going to go into detail. All I'm going to tell you is from me being on at night, I, I was having a lot of pain. Uh, very, very bad pain. And I was just told last week by a doctor that I might have to have surgery for that. And I just kept it to myself. And I'm not going to say what it is. All I'm going to say is, is today is the first day in a long time that pain has been completely gone. And I praise God for it. I didn't even tell Becky yet. Now she's going to get all excited when she hears about it. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we have here. <laughs> I like that, Hamilton. That's funny. All right. 727 250 um, All right. Where was it? I thought there was somebody else here. Okay, if you want prayer, you can, you can write me online. I lost it. The screen goes up and I can't get it to come down. I thought it would go back down, but it won't. So I lost it. But if you want prayer, call me at 727-250-2217 or you can write me on the YouTube page and, I, and if I can catch it, I'll, I'll be praying for you, okay? I, let's see. All right. Um, I, have a, I, I was going to give you Chip Miller's church, okay? Chip Miller and, and his church. Uh, let's see if we can find the address. It's Lighthouse Global Ministries. Um, and it's Sunday services are at 10.30, he says, and Wednesday night at 7. And I'll give you his email address because he didn't put the address of the church. I believe it, it's up in um, Waldo. And if you don't know what Waldo is, it's, it's kind of iconic here in Florida. And I'll tell you about it in a moment. Lighthouse Global Ministries dot M-E. Lighthouse Global Ministries dot M-E. Okay, so that is his, uh, uh, where his church is at. Now, if you want to go there, I, I tell you, I, once again, another person that I highly recommend, another pastor. So if you get a chance, you're in the Waldo area, you, you need to drop in and see him. Now, Waldo is famous in Florida because if you drove through Waldo, uh, the, uh, um, you, you pretty much couldn't get through town without getting a ticket. It, everybody, you'd go through that town, and, and I've been through it several times. I, fortunately, I never got a ticket. Hang on. Who do I have on the line? Suzanne from California. Hi, Suzanne. How are you? I'm doing good. Good. Um, I'm calling tonight for prayer for a friend of mine whose name is Roxana, and she seems to be homeless. Um, she has uh, cancer. 
and she is blind, and um, it's really intimidating, frightening, you know. Mm-hmm. She's and, blind. Yes, yeah, she's she's you know uh, I don't know what she calls it, limited vision, mm-hmm. and uh, it just has been going south for her. And okay. so I'm hoping that people will pray for her. She needs a home, mm-hmm. and she needs to be able to move and in okay. a peaceful way. Okay. Um, I'm just thinking. I used to know where her home for the blind was, but they're, uh, they're not here. But let's pray that God touches her eyes. Okay? Thank you. Did that you would say, be wonderful. What kind of cancer does she have? Bone cancer. Oh, wow. Yeah, she has just had a lot of tragedy. And, uh-huh. uh, Does she know, you know the Lord? That is the problem, I think. That is the big problem, is she's a spiritual seeker, and yet she doesn't embrace Christianity, and, mm-hmm. and I think it's, you know, exactly. something that she's going to revisit. But right now she is so overwhelmed with just yeah. surviving, she can't even think of anything. Yeah. Well, there, there's a whole lot of spirits out there. Um, a friend of ours, we, we visit them out in, in um, Sedona. Oh, and yeah. I didn't believe that's the most bunch of spirit garbage i ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. And uh, people seeking this and that. And you go in these stores and they give you these rocks and then this spirit and that spirit. And you got mm-hmm. these vortexes, as they call them. And, mm-hmm. and I, I'll be real honest, I kind of went out there and I, and I found myself looking like, you guys have lost your mind. Well, it's you know? that they don't know. And they, you know, they're desperate and they seek mm-hmm. what they can, you know. Uh, pe- People are very vulnerable. And you're exactly right, sister, and I'll tell you this. The problem is we've got to have more people out there preaching the truth. Yes, and I have to say myself, you know, it took me a really long time because I was used to a very rigid, uh, you know, church system with a lot of pol- politics yeah. in it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you're not in the favored group in the church, it can be very intimidating and very off-putting. That's a good point. And that's sad that it's that way, isn't it? Yes, it is. And, and you can be in church and be farther from God than anywhere on earth. And that's sad, too. Absolutely. Uh, I remember a, a couple that, that we were going door to door and we went, it started to rain and we decided to go a little further and we, this couple invited us in. And they had been in a, a Methodist church. Now, I know a lot of good Methodist churches that preach the gospel, and they know how to be saved. But they'd been in that church their whole life. And we sat down and we talked, and all of a sudden this man looks at me and he says, you know what, I, this is what we're looking for. He says, we've been sitting in church our entire life, and we did not know how to give our heart to Jesus. Right. Says, Can you pray with us? And we did. And they cried, and they bawled like babies. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, just beautiful. Anyway, that night his wife died, Aww. and uh, um, he was. Uh, uh, hang on. Uh, uh, anyway, she she passed, and I. He said, um, he says, I just want you to know that I want to thank you because I know that I'm going to see my wife, and he says, and I'm going to be in glory. But when you get there, I'm going to run down the streets and wrap my arms around and give you a big hug because he says, I'm leaving the state. You know, as, as we speak, I'm getting ready to leave. Oh. But, you know, stop and think about it. It was uncomfortable. It started to rain. And, and we decided to go one more street in spite of the rain, in spite of what was going on. But you know, too much of the church world, a little rain, they don't even want to go out. Mm-hmm. They don't want to... She'd have went to hell. Yeah. That's pretty scary stuff. Yeah. And who knows what would have happened to him because we never got to see him. He would have moved. Yeah. So let's... It was meant to be. Yeah. So let's... Uh, well, I, I, I have trouble with that statement a little bit, Suzanne, and I'm not, not getting on you, please. Don't, don't take offense to this. I don't, I don't quite believe that way. I believe that, that things happen because we do what we're told. And mm-hmm. many things don't happen because we don't. I don't believe that things always just, well, God decided beforehand that that particular thing's going to happen. I think mm-hmm. he wants us all to be saved. 
I think he didn't want us to fall. I think he wants us all to be healed, but not all are going to be healed and not all are going to believe. And not all are going to go out because he says, I looked for a man, I couldn't find one to stand in the gap. And, and when you look at that, it's not about praying. It's mm -hmm. about preaching he's talking about. Couldn't mm -hmm. find nobody to preach, so he said, I'll have to destroy the whole land because nobody yeah. would answer the call. That's kind of yeah. scary. No, that's horrifying. Yeah. So let's pray for, for, for your sister, or your, your friend here. That God opens our eyes, okay? Father, Thank you. I pray for Ro Roxanne, Lord, and, and there's so many voices out there. There's so many spirits. There's so many, Lord, everywhere you turn. You turn on quote-unquote Christian TV, Lord, and, and, and you hear just voice after voice after voice. I was just talking to that sister yesterday, and she's talking about all the charlatans. She worked in Christian TV for many years, mm -hmm. and her frustration, Lord, knowing full well that they were not real. Mm -hmm. And Lord, she felt, felt powerless to do anything about it. And in these last days, you said that's how it's going to be. I pray, Father, you would send somebody, Lord, not just Suzanne, Father, but somebody that could break through. Break through, Lord, that she could relate to. That could break through with the gospel. Your Holy Spirit would take that hardened heart, Father. Give her a heart of flesh. Give her understanding, a glimpse. Remove the veil from her eyes and let her see Jesus. Let her see you, Lord. Let her see you. I rebuke the cancer in the name of Jesus. And I ask that you give her many more years until she comes to you. In the name of Jesus, I command the eyes to see and Lord her to have life that she might come to you, Lord. But do not let this woman see the grave until she finds you. In Jesus' name I pray. And may you bless my sister, Suzanne, and may you continue to use her. Raise her up, Lord. Stir up her spirit. Preach your word through her, Father. And Father, continue to anoint her in Jesus name I pray Lord she's interceding for her friend now we need more intercessors thank you Jesus amen amen thank you God bless you Susan good to hear your voice again well it's good to talk to you I don't amen. call very often but I well, do are. listen but God bless you and you too All right. have a good night pastor you too hey yeah why don't you do this Write me and, and get a prayer cloth and give it to her. Okay. Right. I've given I've given several away and yeah. um you know my husband's battling his cancer. Yeah. That thing is not his, but you know, the yeah. cancer. Now I and Suzanne, forgive me, I can't remember. Is your husband saved or not? No, he he believes in God but he doesn't seem to accept Jesus and I tried to talk to him about this and Mm -hmm. He just, I, he was raised um, in a very parochial, you know, Catholic school, mm -hmm. and he became very alienated from that idea. Yeah. You know, honestly, I can understand, and uh, um, it's sad, but I feel like the church oftentimes sends more people away than brings them in. Yes. But... You know what? what? What's his first name? David. David. Listen, I'm going to pray the same for David. You know, we're going to take authority over the cancer. But I'm going to ask God to remove the blinders from his eyes. Thank you. You know, sometimes we have blindness, spiritual blindness because of sin, but sometimes we have it because we have bitterness in our heart because we see all the, the and it hurts me to say this, all the garbage in the church. Mm-hmm. And then we turn our backs on it because we think, well, this isn't real. It isn't about what other men do. It isn't about their relationships or how they act or, you know, the, I'm telling you, there's a lot of malarkey out there. I, I don't, I don't want to get into it. And I'm not going to point yeah. fingers or, or, or mention no. names, but I, I know things I wish I didn't know. God is my witness. I, 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 I liked it better when I was ignorant. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway. Well, I have a story. I have a couple of stories to tell you. Well, tell me. Well, when I was a little girl, I used mm -hmm. to sing in the choir, and uh, I would walk to to church. Uh huh. And my mother was very against ch 
church as a formal thing, and my father was very much for the church and very active mm-hmm. in the church. And they had a, you know, falling out and were getting a divorce. And mm-hmm. So I was left on my own pretty much, and I would get myself to church by walking and uh, walking back, and it was mm-hmm. quite a distance. And I would do that so I could sing. Yeah. Uh, well, one time there was a blizzard, and nobody came to get me from my family. And they had told me, we'll pick you up, but they didn't. Mm -hmm. And I walked home in the snow, and I uh, froze both of my feet. Mm -hmm. And it was really quite a a sad moment for me. I was very young. And I I just thought, nobody from the church could give me a ride. Yeah. (laughs) And, you know, they saw this little girl in the snow was as, as deep as I was tall. Yeah. And it just, it sort of made me think, well, Christian is as Christian does. Mm-hmm. And that's sort of the, the barometer that I've used for throughout my life now. It's just that I watch what people do. Amen. You know, when we're a true Christian, when we're really serving the Lord, it can be very uncomfortable, it can be hard, it can be tough. But we do go the extra mile. We do more. You know, we, we, we force ourselves to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, this is, please, I'm not trying to build myself up in what I'm saying, but when, when I left CTN, and, and I know pastor after pastor after pastor, they asked to, to do that program, and a couple of them did, and they said they'd never go back. They couldn't do it. They wouldn't, yeah. and it wasn't, they, they wouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and many of them just, they, they just told them no, and, and they have not still, to this day, they have not found, a, a, they wanted a different pastor each night so they wouldn't wear <laughs> them out. And they still only have, I think, four to do it. They're still looking for somebody to do the fifth night, and they're kind of taking turns. And I thought, wow, in this whole area of, of, of a couple of million people, you can't find five mm-hmm. that, that could show up and, and tarry for three hours? Mm-hmm. You know, I... Yeah. You know, and then when the Lord spoke to me to do this, I was just so thrilled. I was so happy. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, and He's provided everything. He's moved. Is it easy? Of course, it isn't easy. I've really had to, to to stretch myself. And I remember telling God. Now I said, God, you know good and well, I don't have the ability to do that. And He says, No, but you have the authority to pray about it. And I did. And God sent me the people with the ability. Mm-hmm. And in uh, but. It, it takes effort. It takes work. Yeah. And it speaks volumes to people, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it hurt me because people would say, well, you ask money for all the time because uh, you're just for yourself and everything. And I mean, if they knew how little I actually was making, they probably would They'd just fall over. I got paid by the hour. Mm-hmm. And, and then um, uh, you just like, you have no idea. I, if, if I was getting rich down there, in in all of that, and I was a charlatan. What, don't you think I'd still be there? <laughs> if that's all that mattered, more than likely. I, yeah, I, I think people ought to stop and, and think about it. And if they, th- you know, I mean, even with this, everybody, I have people tell, oh, it's free. I got news for you. This is nothing but free. It, it ain't anything close to free. Mm-hmm. I, you know, sure, we get the internet time for very little compared to TV, but we still have to pay a, a we pay a little stipend to keep the commercials off. Yeah. Um, but we're we're going on other venues, but the equipment and and everything that goes with it and and the expenses and now we got to move to a bigger building because we don't have enough room in here and and all the money that it takes for that and I'm like, there's nothing free about it. No. And, but well, it's a labor of love, um, and Christianity is based on love. And that's if your soul feels right, if you, if you know in your soul that you're doing the right thing, uh-huh. you know, it's, it is right, you know, it's, you're yeah. going to prevail. Well, the thing is, is, is this, if you're called of God, mm-hmm. Then you go and you do it, no matter what comes in, no matter how much you make, no matter if you got food on the table, gas in the car, you just go. Mm-hmm. 
I had a, a, I'll never forget this evangelist guy I was talking to, and, and God told him to go, and he went, and he ran out. He was running out of gas in his car, and he drove his car for days and never put a, any gas in it. He finally got home, got a little money, and the first thing he did was put gas in it, and he realized, well, that was stupid. I should have just kept trusting God. <laughs> <laughs> for a full tank. Huh? <laughs> he said it never went off. It, it was on E, and it had been on E, and he drove hundreds of miles. Hundreds. Uh, Far more than if he'd had a full tank. Mm -hmm. and, and he says, and then I put, he said, I got the money. First thing I did is go down and get gas. I realized, oh, man, that was really dumb of me. God was <laughs> filling my tank. And now, because of my lack of faith, I'll have to keep putting gas in my car. That was too funny. It was funny. And, uh, uh, but it's just, God will provide. He will, mm -hmm. he, you, he'll make a way. You may yeah. have to make tents. For a while, you may have to build houses like I did, or or or, or go out and and. But if you're called, you go. Yep. You do, and God will provide. Well, that's it. You do. You mm -hmm. you bring it. You know, you, your faith to action. Yeah, because faith without action is what? It's dead. Right. Very simple. Very yeah. simple. Hey, let's pray. I've got to, believe it or not, another Susanna on trying to get through to me. So oh, good. Let's pray for David. Father, I lift up David. And Lord, sometimes you do your work and we can't see it. And I believe you've been doing your work in David. And Father, I believe David's one of these that, well, he sounds like one of these guys from Missouri. You've got to show me. Absolutely. Now, Father, I pray in Jesus' name. And I know faith don't cometh by here or, or seeing Lord but it does get our attention I speak to that cancer in David and Lord we command it to go and I command his spiritual eyes to see to have understanding and I ask that you open up that heart Lord and get through that hard veneer Lord he don't want it, Lord I think he's got a little pride he don't want to be made a fool of right but Lord I'd rather be a fool in heaven any day than the mm -hmm. smartest man in hell yeah. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, very quickly, soon you open his eyes so that he can, Lord, come into your glorious riches and all that you have to bless us with. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for his soul. Thank you, Thank Lord. You. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you, sister. You too, Pastor. Have a great night. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Now, Suzanne, you've been trying to get through. You call me right back. There you are. Hello, Suzanne. Hi, Pastor Jeff. How are you tonight? I'm doing good. Your name came up on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> I um. I when you had a request. Call, Pardon? Say, um, happy Valentine's Day to you and your wife. Thank you. We had a lovely Valentine's Day. I bet you did. You two are just so meant for each other. <laughs> um, but I, I guess I'm calling because my mom and dad have helped me so much throughout the years. And my dad's about to turn 97, and my mom's about, no, I'm sorry, my dad's about to turn 97, yeah. And my mom's about to turn 98. And they still live in their own house. My dad takes care of my mom. Mm -hmm. He cooks for her. He does everything. He's such a wonderful, wonderful example of a husband. And uh, they're coming up on their, um, I believe it's their 78th wedding anniversary. Wow. And, That's um, a testimony. I call them every day mm -hmm. to talk to them. And when, I, when, when I'm not in a lot of pain, I mm -hmm. go over and visit them and sit with my mom mama while my daddy goes and does the grocery shopping and um I just love them so much and I just want to thank God for giving them such a lo long life and they raised me in the church they were very I won't say very strict but they were very 
um, insistent mm -hmm. that I was raised with manners and um, proper talk. I didn't cuss. I didn't run around mm -hmm. getting into trouble or anything like that because. I knew I would disappoint them, and I didn't want to ever disappoint them. Mm -hmm. And um, now that I'm older, I just pray every morning and every night, thank you, God, for keeping my parents with me. And I know I'm going to break down when the day comes that they're not here, but I just, I just would like, a prayer blessing them and all they have done for me and my sister. Uh -huh. Well, I'll pray for them now. I understand you have an aunt, Laverne, and she's had her leg amputated? Yes, that's my... My dad has a twin brother. They look just alike. Mm -hmm. And it's his wife, and she's a sweetheart. And she's trying she to had walk. vein problems in one of the legs, and then got a blood clot and then they couldn't they couldn't get rid of that and, and cause the they tried to go around it was a artificial vein mm -hmm. to bring blood back to her leg and her feet and it was just uh not working and mm -hmm. she had to be um airlifted over to Tampa I believe it was Tampa Regional that she went to, but she's now had the amputation because basically her leg was dead from no blood circulation, and she is probably going to be in rehabilitation for a while. I'm sure that's not going to be an easy thing to learn to adjust to, but I love her to death, and I just... I pray for her every night. Well, I, is she having trouble with any depression? No, actually not. Um, My Aunt Laverne is, she is so, she loves the Lord so much. Mm -hmm. She is happy all the time, <clears throat> no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. She is happy, happy, happy to have Jesus yeah. in her life. I, I just was concerned because I've had, uh, I've, I've dealt with a lot of people who've had amputations and, and depression is, a lot of times will follow that. But I had a, a lady at the nursing home who had an amputation and she was in a wheelchair for, for a long time. And I asked her, I noticed she had the, the, the artificial leg. I said, why aren't you walking? And she says, oh, I've tried three times, and I, I just never could get the hang of it. I says, do you want to walk? And she says, yes. I says, how about I pray, and, uh, uh, and, and then you go to, to therapy. And she says, they won't do it no more. I says, I'll talk to them. And I did, and they said no. And I, I argued with them a little bit, but I walked away, and I kept telling her, no, things are different. Now I'm telling you, she'll, she'll, she'll work hard at it. She'll walk. And... They said, no, I walked away, and later that day, he got a hold of me. He says, okay, I'll try. And I says, don't worry, she'll walk. And you know what? She put on that leg, and by golly, in a few days, she was walking. So That's let's wonderful. pray that, that God gives her the ability to learn how to walk on this, because it, it takes some time. And it takes a... Thank you. Yes, okay. it does. And let's pray for longer, longer life for, for your uh, mom and dad, even though your mom robbed the cradle. Okay? But, I picked up on <laughs> yeah, By about nine months. <laughs> they, <laughs> so they so, so, so been, your, mama, your mama's the cougar, huh? Is <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have been just unbelievably wonderful parents. Yeah. Um, they have done so much for me and my sister, and they're still helping us. Mm -hmm. And... They they have a beautiful home. Uh -huh. They live elsewhere, but my sister lives in Lakeland, and I live in Lakeland, so they sold their house, and they bought a house in Lakeland so we could all be together. And um, it, 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 
we've had so many nice times. It's mm-hmm. going to be, you know, mm-hmm. really hard. Yeah. It, to lose him, and I don't want to. I, I I told him to be like Moses and live to whatever, 120. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, let's pray. All right. Okay. We got somebody trying to get in my building here. I don't know what they want. Father, I lift up Suzanne's parents, Lord. I lift up her mom and dad, and I thank you, Lord, because they have been blessed of you. 78 years, Lord, of marriage. And Father... You've given them 98 years of life. But Lord, I ask for more years. I ask that you give them more years, but healthy years, Lord. Because, Lord, they've been such a rock to to Suzanne. They've been such a blessing to so many. And I ask for this gift for them, this gift of grace in Jesus' name. Health, Lord, life. And Lord, I pray for this Aunt Laverne. And Lord, I pray that you continue to bless her, which I know you'll do. I pray that she continues to walk with the oil of joy. And Father, I just ask right now that you set two angels under each arm to hold her up. And Lord, to teach her how to walk with that artificial leg. And to get around and give her the freedom of walking again. In Jesus' precious name, amen. God Mm -hmm. bless you, Suzanne. Always a pleasure to talk with you, sister. Thank you, Pastor. You're always a blessing. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Um, you can call us at 727-250-2217, or you can go on YouTube and you can write us. I, I'm trying to keep an eye on those the best I can. Uh, it's, it's not easy, I'll tell you that. Um, the... If you want to to help us, okay, we're we're, we're moving to another building. Um, I've, we've already talked to the landlord, and we need the bigger building because we want to add more lines to the phones. Uh, I can already see that it's going to be very soon. We will have to go to the third hour, but I want to qualify the the calls before they come through. You know, you still got still got to deal with them people who who you know I I don't know what it is. They, they just uh, they get some sort of weird humor out of calling up, making fools of themselves, but um, from time to time. But we want to do that, in, and we want to add to the ministry. And my my prayer is, I'm asking God to to send somebody to be a prayer warrior with me, to learn how to do all the equipment, to learn how to uh, and 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 pray for people and call in. I'm praying that God sends me a man because we're going to have to work close together. Not being a male chauvinist pig, okay. I'm just simply saying, for uh, uh, for appearances' sake, that would be the best situation. Uh, I have no problem working with a woman, uh, it, you know, a, a godly woman under the right circumstances, but not down here alone at night. That would not be good, and it's not going to happen. But I am praying that God will send me a godly man to work with me. Uh, but I want somebody that can be here when I'm here, praying for people off the phone too. Um, a lot of people. I'm telling you, if you if you even had an idea of the things I hear offline, um, they have no business being thrown out there before everybody. And I hear just about everything you can imagine. Um, you, they they don't hold back, but they need help, and they desperately need help. Um, we when I was at CTM, we had people calling in want to commit suicide, and. One night I stayed there, I, no, I'm not kidding, I was there till 6 in the morning talking to this gal. And uh, um, just talking her through it. And I finally got her to tell me what she took, what she did, and we looked it up, checked it out, and, and all we had to do is keep her awake for so long until enough of it left her system. And, and, and uh, we got a hold of the police department, they got a hold of a doctor, and they said, if you can do such and such, she, it'll pass, she'll get through it. And she did. She, she was fine. Uh, but we, we've spent hours with people like this, but this isn't something you want to put on national internet or, or TV. You know, they, they just, they need to talk through. So I want this ministry to expand is what I'm getting at. But to do that, I need your help, okay? So give us a call. Uh, Maryland's alone. 
So, you know, if you don't get through, just keep calling. And if it says that she's not there, let me grab this call. Give me a second. Who do I have on the line? Hello? Who do I have on the line? Oh, this is Donna Carwana. Donna Kawana? Carwana. Oh, Carlana. Okay. Yes. Can you hold on? <laughs> hold on just a moment, Don. Don't 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 hang up. I was just finished the statement. If, oh, okay. If, if you all can help us financially, just call us at seven two seven five zero nine three eight six five. Okay, and Marilyn will get right with you. And if you don't get through, just keep trying. She'll get with you. All right. Hey, Donna, how you doing tonight? Hi. Fine. Thank you. I actually have three requests okay okay the first is for my dad he's 82 years old okay and a couple of weeks ago he when he got up in the morning his like legs were weak and he felt dizzy and like he fell but mm -hmm. he didn't hurt himself so we went to the doctor, and the doctor didn't know what was wrong with him. So we're going to the neurologist next week. Mm -hmm. But also now, that went away, took a long time, and it, it seems to have gone away. But now he's got vertigo. Okay. So that's one thing I need okay. prayer for. And that's miserable. I've had vertigo. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Me, too. It is. It's, it's really, really a drag. <laughs> so the other two requests are smaller. I have a little dog, Prancer, and I know you prayed for them once before I sent you an email. Mm -hmm. um, but my little dog, Prancer, has a heart murmur. Okay. And I worry about him all the time. So... I would like a complete healing for him. Okay. And my cat, Bumba, has kidney disease that I just found out. And I would like healing for him. And that's it. All right. Hold on, I'm writing this all down. All right. Okay. And Bumba? Yeah, Bumba. <laughs> How did you get that name? I'm just curious. Uh, well, I always have a first and a middle name for my animals. Uh, they all have first and middle names. So, I mean, his name actually is Morris Bumba Carwana. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like <laughs> So, I just, it kind of stuck, you know. I just picked it out. I always pick out this weird names. Okay, all right. My dog is Prancer Porky Pockets Carwana. I, I had a neighbor, he was a friend, we were, grew up together, we were kids, and I don't know why I can remember this name to this day, but he had a little uh, terrier dog. And he, uh -huh. his name, honest to goodness, and he would say it and that dog would come running, but it was Zipper T-Bone Bass, my dear. <laughs> I don't know where he come up with it. He was like eight years old, and that's what he called his dog, and his dog answered to it. But he would say the full name every time he called his dog. Oh, is he, okay, now I don't feel so bad. Yeah, so, but I, you know, here I am, you know, 50 years later, and I can still remember him calling that name out and remember it just as clear as it was yesterday. And, and I just thought that was normal, so... I guess it is. Yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes I feel funny to talk yeah. to people my cat's name. And they're like, what is that? Hey, there are animals that love them. I love them. They're like my, they're my family. They're part of the family. And I, I actually tried to send this on the chat on YouTube but for some reason, it wasn't going through. So I said, okay, I got to call right. Pastor Jeff. Well, let's pray about it. And, and, and Sister, you know, I think it's pretty obvious as you read Scripture, and, and there was laws concerning God's, you know, animals and how we're to take care of them. And uh, um, God cares very much and loves animals very much. And some people, I've had people get uptight with me about praying for animals. I'm like, really? You know, no. I, I think it's, uh, you need to read Scripture. Anyway, let's pray. 
Donna. Father. Okay, thank you. Oh, what's your daddy's first name? Oh, Charlie. Okay. Yeah, you played you played for my brother the other night too last week, Charles. Yeah. Yeah, okay. uh, with the bipolar and yeah. his wife Brenda. Yeah, well, this is my dad. They, his name is Charlie, too. All right, let's pray. Father, okay. I just speak over Charles right now, and I command the source of that vertigo to go. Whether it's swelling, Lord, or it's his inner ear, or, Lord, those crystals, or whatever it is, we command them to come into order. We command that vertigo to go, the dizziness to leave. And I command everything to stay put and it to never come back again in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. And Father, I pray over Prancer, Lord, her little dog. And I speak to Prancer, your heart be healed. We command the murmur to stop. And I ask that you give this dog long life, Lord. And I pray over her cat, Bamba, Father. And I command those kidneys to be new. To be soft again, pliable, Lord. No hardening of them anymore. To work thoroughly. In Jesus' name we pray. And I thank you, Lord, for loving the animals. You even drop the crumbs to them, don't you, Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless Amen. you, sister. Right. Thank you, Pastor thank you. Jeff. Well, I, had, I, I just about got the call. There was a call coming in. I'm just going to ask you to call back whoever you were. Oh, Donna, where do you live? What state? Uh, a story in New York. New York, okay. I, I yeah. should have told from, could tell from the accident. Or, I mean, accent, right? <laughs> Everybody uh, says that. I, I, I'm I, like, what accent? <laughs> well, you know, we all have accents, but we, you know, if you live in the Midwest, you think, well, everybody else has an accent. Yeah. And if you live in New well, York, I, everybody else has an accent. We're the normal ones. They're not, you know. So... <laughs> It's, it, it, it's kind of humorous, isn't it? But I tell you, I've been out west many times, mm -hmm. and they always tell me, wow, you're from New York, aren't you? And I say, yeah, how do you know that? Yeah. And they tell me, because you have an accent. You, you know what I find myself doing a lot? Because I'm around a lot of New Yorkers down here. I, I, <laughs> I don't have a dog anymore. I have a dog. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> you do pick up on the you, down here we're mixed up we get them from everywhere so we we, we uh, sometimes it <laughs> I pick up on things like yeah, I, you can't, have an I can't even believe I just said that you know <laughs> so, well, well my dad grew up in Tennessee so I'm bound to have a bit so you know. I've been to Tennessee it's beautiful yeah I pastored there for a little bit yeah, yeah and I've been to Florida, so I've yeah. actually been all over the place. Yeah, I, I've been up to New York. I, I've been around most most of the continental United States and out of the yeah. country, but not real far. You know, I'm, uh, I hope someday to get over to Israel or something. But just, That is my dream. Yeah. I, I, that is the place I want to go. Well, I'll tell you what, when we get all this up and running, I'm going to do, we'll do an Israel trip where we, people can go with us over there. I was, oh, that would be I cool. Actually I actually was would working go. with a company to do that when I was at the other place, but I couldn't get them to get on board with it, and I thought, well, okay, well, now I can. So, yeah. so we'll, try to, we'll try to do that. That and, would be great. Um, I, I, wouldn't that be awesome? Well, that, that is my ultimate dream, to yeah. walk where Jesus walked. Mm -hmm. I, I can't even begin to imagine how great that Amen. must be. Amen. I'm going to let you Amen. go. Amen, it's for I, sure. I had another person trying to call in. I'm going to ask you, please call back. But God bless you, Donna. Thank you for calling. Thank you, Pastor right. Jeff. Bye-bye. Right. Good night. Good night. Now, if that other caller, if you give me a call back, I'll be more than happy to answer it. I'm sorry I couldn't get to you. Like I said, when we get the new system in, I don't know how it works. I've got to have somebody help me put this thing in, but we get it in, we can, we can park you, we can put you in, in line. Now, right now, i got two lines, um, but if, if it goes like it did at the beginning of the night, I had like three or four callers kept calling through, and, but they'll park you so that, that you can wait and you don't have to keep calling back. But whoever you were, if you'll call back, I don't want to say your name because it did come up. 
727-250-2217. And as I was trying to say uh, uh, when our last caller called in, uh, Sister Donna, um, gee, I just got friends all over the world, don't I? Um, if you want to donate, call 727-509-3865. I, I have been rebuked uh, by, by my people. They said, uh, you do have to bring in a little money, Jeff. Uh, Monday night, nothing came in. We had one person give last night. But then we had, last week, we, had, we did very well. So um, it's, it's come, well, no, was it? One night this week, we didn't even have a call come in. But we have, it has been coming in really well overall. But the, as they said, Jeff, we do have to pay the bills. We do have to take care of things. So you need to remind people, uh, and we do want to expand. And I'm just enjoying not being pressured. It was horrible. You know, I felt pressured all the time at the other place. Just, just constant. Well, you got to raise this. you got to raise this. And they're not even coming close to raising it now. And I'm like, well, why did I have to raise it if they don't? I'm not coming against them, please. I'm not saying anything bad about it. I guess they're just giving them time to build it up again. But... It, uh, I did feel a lot of pressure, and I didn't like that. I don't like to be pressured. Nobody does. So I'm enjoying this. 727-250-2217. And I don't, I don't care what it is. What is it you need prayer for? Give us a call tonight. You know, it's Valentine's Day. I know there are people feeling lonely. I... We, we got a, a pastor that calls him, Pastor King, and I don't know if he's watching tonight, but Pastor, you've been on my heart today. And uh, his wife passed away about seven months ago, and I couldn't get him off my heart today. Just thinking, you know, I know he, he's having a hard time. This is uh, his first Valentine's Day without his wife, and, and uh, you can only imagine. And if you're going through that, please pray for Pastor King tonight. Please lift him up. You know, and, and the sad part is a pastor sometimes you gotta put on that, you know, everything's great, everything's wonderful face when you get before your congregation. And you know, your heart's broken, you're crying out inside. But you're taking care of everybody else. And I had a pastor tell me that he went to uh, uh actually went to this some therapy classes for grief. He was going through something. He said, I got there and I just started ministering to everybody else and he said, and I inside I needed ministered to but they needed help, and that's just a pastor's heart. So but lift, lift this brother up. Lift him up in prayer and just remember him because it's got to be hard. And, you know, some people choose to leave their spouses, and I, I often think if they'd have just put a little more effort into things, um, they'd probably still be together. If they put as much effort in their first marriage as some of them do in their second, they wouldn't be in a second. They'd have still been in their first. And I'm not condemning anybody. I'm not, listen, it isn't that. But before you get to that point of divorce, before you get to that point, please pray about it. Seek God out about it. Because this, it gets worse. It gets harder the second round. God bless you. Who do I have on the line? Hello? Are you there? I don't know. I guess they don't have their phone on. Okay. Uh, I don't know what happened. They never said a word. Anyway, 727-250-2217. Um, you know, it, Becky, you know, you got me a beautiful card, and she wrote me on Facebook, and, and uh, of course I, I got her a card and flowers, and, you know, we exchange gifts and that sort of thing, but it's just being together. And I, I told her today, I says, I just can't imagine what life would be without you. And that's the way it's supposed to be, people. You, when you get married, it's supposed to be, you're supposed to be in love with that woman, man, or, or, or woman. And if things aren't going the way it is, I'm not going to sit here and tell you, Becky, and I've never had a fight. Boy, I'll tell you, we've had some doozies. She came around finally. I just stood my ground. No. Sometimes I, I had to go back and say, I messed up, babe. I'm sorry. And sometimes I had to grovel. And then there would be times where, as I told my son, I said, son, 
You remember them chickens we had in the backyard? I said, yeah, you remember when they got mad, how we'd have to, you'd have to leave them alone, let them go brood a while, and they'd calm down? I said, sometimes you got to do that with your wife. Just let her calm down. She, she may have forgiven you, but she's still mad. And so just, just, just don't go poke the hen anymore, and, 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 and you'll find out that, that it'll calm down. And I said, just give her some time. And sometimes you got to do that. Sometimes you just got to give each other some space and some time. But people, it's worth it. It's oh so worth it. And it, when I was counseling people, marriage counseling, I was doing some of it, you know, and, and uh, I used to tell them, if, if they've quit fighting, if they quit arguing, usually I knew I couldn't help them. Because if you're arguing, that means you care. It means you're trying to, there, there's still something there. But when you quit the fighting, that's the ones that scared me. Because those are the ones I'm like, you don't even want to fight for your marriage anymore. You've given up. It's out of you. And those were the toughest. So you may think, we fight too much. Now let me tell you something. You don't fight for something you don't want. And you're trying to come to agreement and you're trying to, 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 to work something out. So just take a deep breath and step back. And try to, to, to empathize with your, your partner. Try to put yourself in their shoes. And men, hey, women don't get mad at me now. I'm just going to tell you how it is. Women are emotional creatures. You're trying to reason with her. And all she wants to do is cut your throat. Okay? Back off. Quit trying to reason with her because all you're doing is making her angrier. Just back off. Sometimes you just need to hold her or hug her or sometimes you just need to let her go on the other side of the room. But just, just, just quit trying to force your point. You may win the battle, but you're going to lose the war. Be more understanding. It isn't always about being right. And you can be right, but you might end up losing your marriage. It's about being understanding, working together. And you know, most people, you prove them wrong or something, that, ain't, that don't necessarily improve your relationship. So try to be a little more understanding. Women, appreciate your man. Men need to be appreciated. You need to feel secure, but they need to be appreciated. And you better tell him. You better thank him. Don't just bow, beat him. Beat him. Well, you don't bring home enough money. You don't pay the bill. You don't do this. Well, the guy next door, he has a Cadillac, or he has a BMW, or he has a Mercedes. Why don't we have nice things? Blah, 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 blah. You, you build him up, and I'll tell you what. He'll work his tail off to get that next word of praise out of you. You tear him down, and I guarantee there's more women in this country than there are men, and there's more, a lot of women out there more than glad to take that man off your hands and have him provide for her and tell him whatever he wants to hear so she don't have to work as hard or, 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 or be a single mother or, a single, uh, or just a single person. So be careful. Build your man up, because when you build him up, you build you up. But you tear him down, you destroy his ego, you beat him, your marriage is heading for the, the graveyard real quick. And it shouldn't just be on Valentine's Day. Sir, hug your wife every day. Make a point of it. Hold her, hug her, touch her. Let her know you're there. I don't mean in a sexual way. I'm talking about just, just, just let her know that you love her. Call her on a whim. Be at work once in a while. Just say, hey, babe, I just want you to know I'm thinking about you. Wise up. Because if you don't, there's a lot of men out there who be more than happy to give her attention. They'll play her and they'll destroy your marriage. I had, had a friend of mine a while back lost his marriage because his wife, she didn't feel like she was getting enough attention. She got our girlfriend, or I mean a boyfriend on the internet. Ended in divorce. 
quite frankly, all three of their lives were destroyed. All righty. Who do we have here? I need somebody to call me. Seven, two, five, listen, I'm almost going off the air. If you want prayer, you better call. 727-250-2217. Two, 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 and let's see if I have any more prayer requests here. I don't see any. You guys are not writing me. Come on now. By the way, Hamilton came in here the other night and brought me a, a beautiful cane he made out of a grapevine. I, I meant to bring it. I want to show it to y'all. Uh, Hamilton, I really like my, my cane. That was nice. It's a walking stick, I should say, more like a staff. But, but thank you very much, Hamilton. I never, never thought about making one out of a grapevine, but it did a magnificent job. It's very beautiful. So thank you. I appreciate that very, very much. Okay, what is she saying? I don't know what that means. All right, give me a call, 727-250-2217. I have to, there we go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 727-250-2217. We got a couple of minutes. Is there somebody you need prayer? I'll, I'll, I'll pray for you. you. Need me to lift, up my, lift you up? I'll be more than happy to. Let's pray for the president. I just feel like we need to pray for him. He's got to make a, a, a decision coming up. I, I'm praying he makes the right decision concerning uh, uh, the, the, this bill concerning finances coming up and building of this wall and, and uh, it's a lot more than that there's a lot of things we need agreement power and agreement we need some agreement in Washington not agreeing to, to tear down this government for political reasons but what's best for the people so can you lift him up with me right now Father I lift up President Trump I pray Father for supernatural wisdom let him know whether he's to sign this, Lord, or what to do with it. And Father, help him to stand strong, Lord. Not do what's popular, but to do what you tell him to do for what's best for this nation. Father, I ask that he would not do a political move at this time. But he'd make the right decision. And Lord, I pray that you bring some more unity in this country and you'd raise up your prayer warriors to pray, to undergird and lift up this, his administration our Congress, our governors, Lord, our, our, our Supreme Court, and all of these people. I pray, Lord, that you'd fall upon them and give them wisdom and help them to work together in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I've enjoyed being with you tonight. And um, we had a lot more callers tonight. It's building, praise God. I don't know how many people um, I told about the program today, wrote them about the program. I got home last night. I spent almost an hour answering emails after I got home. And, and uh, God is getting the word out. We're expanding. And we haven't even begun to do everything we want to do because I, I, I just wanted to learn everything first. And there's going to be an explosion of people calling soon. Um, it, it's, but every night we're getting a few more callers. I'm keeping track. We're getting more people. I haven't heard out of Ted tonight, but Ted gives me... Uh, a report every day and lets me know and once again thank you Ted I appreciate your faithfulness and being there I hope you're watching but he wrote me again today giving me the report on how many people are watching and, and um, it's helpful it's helpful but it's nice to know I got people that are joining us and with us may God bless you richly may his hand be upon you in, in, in uh, um, every way and um, I'll be back tomorrow night. Please keep praying for me. It, it's much appreciated. And I will, uh, um, I will see you, like I said, uh, tomorrow night. God bless. I am so glad that you joined us tonight. I enjoy praying for people. But from the moment God put this in my heart to do this, He has brought other people alongside of me in agreement to do this thing. My wife Becky got behind me, there was agreement, I felt the power of God each step of the way. And I know that God brought you to us tonight.
to pray with us, to be in agreement with us, to, to, to have the passion, to see the power of God and God work in other people's lives. Or maybe you call, be tuned in, and you don't even know why you did. But God brought you here for this moment in time. And I want you to write me. I want you to contact me. I want to interact with you. I want to pray for you. I want to get others praying for you. You can go to my blog, PastorJeffLane.com, and you can email me. I read every email. I pray over every single email. You can write us at P.O. Box 23, Palm Harbor, Florida, 34682. And we can pray together. We can seek God together. I'm not saying I have all the answers, but I know who does. But without your help, we can't do it. And I'm giving you an opportunity to hear the word of the Lord, to receive the word of the Lord, and allow it to work in your life. God bless you, and please join us Monday through Friday from 10 to 12 each night as we take the word of the Lord to people, as we pray for people. Be a part of this with me. Thank you.